Welcome to Sojourns. Let's journey into sewing. Hi everybody. My name is Chris and this is Sojourns, where we journey into sewing. Welcome back to the sewing room. I'm back again today because I have two beautiful dresses I want to share with you. Now these are not a new pattern, but it's an updated pattern. So let's get right into it. What you see here is from Love Notions. This is the Tessa sheath dress from Love Notions. It's a knit pattern and it's been updated. It's been updated for their inclusive sizing and the new size chart, the new sizing block that Love Notions began using a year or two ago. So if you have previously purchased the Tessa sheath dress, that new updated pattern is already in your account. So just go to your Love Notions account and re-download the pattern and you will get the new and updated pattern. So it's more than just adding the additional sizes. The size range now goes from extra small through 5X. It also includes a full bust piece. So if that's something you normally need to do a full bust adjustment, that's been done for you, you would just choose that option when you print. One note, if you will be using the full bust option, then when you look at the finished measurement chart, add two inches to whatever that number is for your size to the waist and the hips. Because the way Love Notions does their full bust, it adds an additional two inches of ease at the waist and hips. So you may not need to blend out in those areas, or you may, or you may need to blend in. Just wanted you to note that. So let's go over the features of the Tessa sheath dress. There are two neck options for you. There's the scoop neck that you see here, and there's a boat neck option. This is one piece. This bodice is one piece. This whole dress front is one piece. But if you look over here at the red dress, there's an optional yoke, which allows you to do some color blocking, to do some different fabric choices. And that yoke is on the front and back, so you can choose to use it on the front and back, or the front or the back. And you'll see on this one here, I've chosen to use it on the front yoke, the back, and the sleeves. And we'll get to that in a minute. I have so much to talk to you about. There are two lengths for this pattern knee length to the knee, and a midi length. On the back, and let me turn this one here, there is a center seam down the back. And the beauty of a center seam down the back is it just gives such a flattering style or a flattering look. So when you choose your size, you'll choose by your upper bust, then you'll choose full bust or standard bust, and then you will blend for the waist or the hips and the hips in or out depending on your figure according to the size chart and look at the finished measurements chart because you will need to be very careful with the hips that it's not too tight. And what can happen if you don't blend out properly for hips then you will get some bunching up here and there's two things that can cause this pooling of fabric in the back. One is you've not allowed enough room for the hips and therefore the fabric is coming up looking to find some room. Or you may have a sway back. You may find some pooling in the back, in which case you'll want to do a sway back adjustment. I did a very small sway back adjustment, three eighths of an inch, half an inch. I did a half an inch sway back adjustment so that I would not have any pooling. Here. Now there are a couple different finish options for the neckline depending on which option for the dress you choose. I've chosen for this dress, and this is a baby French Terry. It has the appropriate stretch needed, but this is a very substantial French Terry, and it doesn't have a ton of stretch. Uh, oh, it's not overly stretchy like some French Terries can be, and there is no vertical stretch on this. So it's perfect because it will not increase as you wear it, it will not hang down. So this was perfect. I've chosen to do the facing option. I love a facing. It's just, it's finished so beautifully at the top and it really just finishes this, this is a, you know, a little bit of an elegant dress, the style. And so it just is a really nice finish as opposed to having a band in a, as you would on a sweater or a t-shirt or maybe a more casual dress. There's also the choice of a binding and the binding option 
turns to the back. So you don't see that either. But for this one, I chose the facing. And I've also chosen to top stitch the facing with my cover stitch machine. Really holds it in place, really looks lovely. I did understitch the facing, which is very important to do so it doesn't peek out. But I think to doubly ensure that and to give some more style and finish and polish, do the top stitching. It's very beautiful. Okay, I'm going to pop this one over here and I'll come back and talk about the red dress. So if you are tuning in today, Friday, December 10th, the Tessa sheath dress is the feature Friday pattern at Love Notions. And that means it's $5. So if this is new to you, if you've never purchased this, $5 today only. My affiliate link for this dress is down below in the description box and I always appreciate it when you use that at no cost to you. It does help me support the channel because I receive a small commission for each one that you purchase using my link. So thank you so much. There's also some more information in the description box of other ways you can find me on Instagram, my Facebook Sojourns page. We can connect there. Love to read your thoughtful comments and I love to answer them back if you have any questions. For the red dress, I've chosen to use the optional yoke on the front, it's also on the back. And I've chosen to use that same fabric for the sleeves. I'm absolutely smitten with the way this came out. And in our So You Can segment, I'm going to show you how to do these teeny tiny, I'm gonna call them serger French seams on your mesh. Now, this is a hybrid mesh, if you will. It's a cross between a woven and a stretch. There is some horizontal stretch to this, but it's very little. It's like a mechanical stretch, maybe 10, maybe 15%. You can use a stretch fabric for your yoke if it has the same stretch as your body of your dress. Now this is cotton legra. It's kind of a brushed cotton legra. Or you can use a woven yoke so this is kind of a hybrid, but what you would not want to do is see serger seams or a thick, heavy binding. Obviously, you can't do a facing on a sheer mesh on this gorgeous embroidery mesh, and this is really the focus of the dress. So what I wanted was the tiniest little seam I could do that would look fantastic, and just that red pop of color, because it matches the dress, and yet this seam still holds beautifully and I'm going to show you how we do that. So let's move on to the So You Can segment and I'll show you how I finished this gorgeous, beautiful Tessa sheath dress with these tiny, beautiful seams. All right, here we go. Okay, so here we are at my sewing machine. And like I told you, this fabric will act like a woven. It has very little stretch, but we're going to treat it as a woven. When you purchase your sewing machine, it comes with a zigzag plate already installed on your sewing machine. And this large area right here is so that your needle can go back and forth and back and forth and create a zigzag. But I have changed that plate out for a single hole needle plate. That means that this hole will be tiny and you can only do a straight stitch or you can do a lightning stitch, but I never sew with a lightning stitch. So I'm going to show you that single hole plate. So move up here with me, and you'll see I have replaced that with the single hole needle plate. When you purchase this plate additional, at least for the Brilliant, it comes with an additional foot that is a single hole, that is also a single hole foot. So your needle will go up and down, just in that hole. The beauty of the single hole needle plate and the foot is that your fabric will not get pulled down into that big slot on the zigzag foot. Maybe you've had this experience with a knit or with a really fine woven where you're doing a straight stitch and all of a sudden your fabric's pulled down into that plate you have to take the whole thing apart. You have to try to get the fabric out of there and it is such a pain. And you can get nesting under there. This will prevent that. And it's absolutely necessary when working with this 
mesh. Let me show you how we set it up and how I create these seams that you do not see except for that tiny, tiny red seam. My mesh is very see-through except for the embroidery. And so I don't want to see another color on this portion. So I've chosen to use invisible thread. If you've never worked with invisible thread, it's, it's fiddly, I will tell you that. It's kind of like fishing line. It's very twirly, it feels a little bit plasticky like fishing line. It does take patience. This is why we're using the single hole needle plate and the single hole presser foot. These things help. We want to do everything we can to help. I've also loaded a bobbin with my invisible thread because I do not want to see this. I only want to see the teeny tiny serger seam that we're going to use to finish it. So I've filled my bobbin. I did use my machine to fill my bobbin, but it took some doing. I needed to pull out this thread a tiny bit and kind of hold it out here a little bit so that it didn't pull tight. It just wound very nicely. You can hand wind it if you want, or you can just try your machine at a really low speed, but I found that worked best for me. So we're all set. We have our invisible thread and our bobbin. We're going to do a straight stitch, and I'm going to do that at 2.5. Let's set that up. Okay, I have my machine set up for a straight stitch and you must have it on the center stitch. If your machine does a stitch that goes to the left or to the right, this must be center so that that needle goes down and goes through that center hole. So that's what my machine says. Yeah. that stitch length a tiny bit to 3.0 because if you try this and you need to unpick, it's gonna be very difficult to pick out a 2.5 stitch with invisible thread on a sheer mesh. So let's give ourselves the best chance of success here. So here we have our embroidered mesh and it is right sides together just as you normally would do. And we're gonna pretend this is the shoulder seam. I have very little of this fabric left so I'm showing you on a scrap. I've got it pinned at the shoulder. Take these pins away just now so they're not in my way later when I'm showing you. This pattern has 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so we're going to sew a straight stitch with that 3 eighths inch seam allowance. We'll go a little bit, we'll lock in our stitches like we normally would. And let me reverse that a little bit. All right, now we're set. I like to go nice and slow. The invisible thread can be tricky. This seems to be working beautifully and that's because we have this little hole and this little hole plate. If you do not have these things and cannot get them, I would suggest you put some Solvi, some wash away stabilizer, and I would do two layers under your fabric against your presser foot to keep it from pulling down into that zigzag plate. And it just washes out with a sprinkle of water. We're doing three eighths of an inch seam allowance here. We're going to come to the end and of course lock in our stitches. This invisible thread's working beautifully today. And let's lock in and cut that off. So here we have invisible thread. And now when we open this up, you do not see anything. That's beautiful. And now we're going to go over to the serger and we are going to use this line that we created, this stitch line as our guide. And we are going to do a teeny tiny rolled hem along here as close as we can get to that line. This is our construction line so we don't wanna cut it off and this is where the toe marking on our serger will be helpful. And then we'll finish this with a beautiful, beautiful rolled hem. And our choice of color for me is red. Here we are, are at the serger, and I have my serger, my Triumph serger, set up for a rolled hem. In the upper looper, I'm using woolly nylon, which just is a fatter, stretchier, softer thread and that fills in a rolled hem nicely. It gives a beautiful filled in finish and it's in matching thread. This time I'm doing it matching and I'm going to match it to the red because that's the 
pop of color and the couture detail that we want but we don't want to see any construction seam just a finishing seam here's the shoulder seam we put together with our invisible thread now what we are going to do this was sewn at 3 8 we are going to go the serger will sew at a quarter of an inch when you take a little bit off the knife okay with the knife we are going to put this construction the straight stitch line right between and I'm going to pull in here the first and second needle markings. So this is your right needle, this is your left needle, these are cover stitch markings. So I want this construction stitch to go right between the two. We do not want to cut it off because a rolled hem is not a construction seam. It will not hold up when you're wearing your dress, when you're putting it on and off, it won't hold up very long. And we really want this to hold up as long as we want to own the dress. So we're gonna come up next to it to create a teeny tiny seam, but we do not wanna cut that off. So I'm going to line it up between the two needles. And I'm going to allow the serger to roll that edge, finish it, finish it beautifully. I have my machine all set up. I'm using a very tiny, a 0.75 to one inch is the stitch length. And the width is set at 3.5 for my serger. I'm also adding a tiny bit of differential feed because I do not want this to stretch at all. Even though it's a woven, it does have 10 or 15% stretch. And so I don't want to create a very wavy or like a lettuce looking seam. That differential feed will keep it from stretching out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm doing everything left-handed and left-footed. So let's give it a shot. And I'm going to go slow. I always go slow with a rolled hem. Here we go. Really keeping that line between the two needles. I'm not putting on this fabric. I'm just holding it and guiding it so that that stitch stays where I want it to stay. going to come all the way off. There we go. Let's see if you can see this. A beautiful rolled hem and it's very hard to tell because it's clear but there's the construction line right next to it. So there's your beautifully finished teeny tiny seam. You'll take it over and this is a shoulder seam so we're going to press that to the back and then when we fold this over the smallest little enclosed seam with a beautiful color and you don't have to worry about it coming apart because you have constructed it with that straight stitch first. So I used this, of course, on the yoke, the two yokes, the shoulder seams coming together. I also use that exact same method to put the sleeves on. So I hope you enjoyed that So You Can segment. Learn something new, right? <laughs> so happy that worked out. And then for the neckline, I just used the rolled hem here because I'm not joining any seams. It's a single yoke. So all I needed to do was finish the seam. So you can use a woven binding or a knit binding, and the tutorial tells you how to do those things. But again, this mesh fabric is the star, and I wanted it to stay that way. So I just used a beautiful rolled hem here too. So let's get into some modeling shots. And I know that you'll enjoy the Tesla sheath dress. It takes a variety of fabrics, French terry, Cotton Lycra. Liverpool is beautiful. Go through your stash and enjoy making it. Use the yoke option. Use the rounded neck option. There's also a sleeveless option, so it'll take you all season long. Thank you for joining me in the sewing room, and until next time, enjoy your sewing.